Right now on Up With Creme, the state of Washington is back open since the coronavirus pandemic began. Dana Marie McNichol is covering the reopening this morning. That's right, Tim. I'm telling you exactly what businesses can and can't do. Also, where the mask mandate is going, and I'll be breaking all of that down. Coming up. And we're going to take you outside, talk temperatures on the rise. Yesterday, all-time record highs. Today, another scorcher. Plus, water sports are a great way to cool down. This morning, we'll tell you where you can rent equipment on Lake Coeur d'Alene. Up with Krim begins now. Thanks for watching Up with Krem. I'm Tim Pham. This morning, we're talking with Spokane Mayor Nadine Woodward. In our last hour, we talked about the next steps for the city now that Washington is reopened. But now we want to switch things up and talk about something that's on everyone's mind this week, of course, the extreme heat. Mayor Woodward joining us now again. Mayor Woodward, thanks again for being with us. Uh, let's jump right in. How would uh, you rate the city's response to our record-breaking heat? Well, I think we've had a really thoughtful and intentional response to how we were going to be able to provide relief for our vulnerable members of our community during this unprecedented heat wave. We worked with the Parks Department, libraries, um, and a number of our staff, our emergency management uh, uh, manager, and um, come at, came up with a plan that's very, very flexible. So we have all of our libraries uh, that are cooling centers throughout the neighborhoods in the city. And then centrally located, we have the loop carousel, which can uh, accommodate 72 people, but we can bring on other uh, facilities and accommodate 1,000 people if needed. We have not seen that need. Uh, we're right in the middle of this heat wave, and we've seen an uptick in the number of people who have checked out the carousel. People drop in, people in the park drop in, we've had unhoused drop in, elderly drop in, and then through uh, our library system as well. So. Um, we have places for people to go. I know the school district has opened up some of their schools. Catholic Charities downtown opened up a number of their havens. And so there are, there are options for people. And uh, as I mentioned, there hasn't been a need, a huge need right now, but we definitely have the ability to expand if there, if there becomes a bigger need. Mayor Woodward, I want to ask you about your conversations with the Vista. Obviously, with the outages, the rolling outages, that's tough for people right now. This is unbearable heat. What are those conversations uh, been? What have those been like? And I guess, uh, what are you doing to ensure that we keep power on for all of our neighbors? Well, there's you know nothing I can do. A Vista is its own entity, uh, but in my conversations with them, you know I understand that they're trying to protect infrastructure and much larger outages by doing these very targeted um, planned rollout um, blackouts that they rolled out that are not supposed to be any longer than an hour but in some cases i'm hearing that there have been um, longer outages in some areas of the city they're seeing a much uh, larger use of of the grid because of these temperatures and so what we're asking people to do is to do their best to, to conserve power. You know, if you've got your air conditioning on 24 seven, I, I know there are a lot of homes and families that are doing that, but instead of 65 degrees, bump that temperature up to 75 degrees. And maybe, you know, if you can turn it off for an hour and then turn it back on, but, but try to conserve as much as you can, because we do have an issue right now. And I understand that those rollouts of outages will continue again today. But we do have places for people to go. If there is an outage that lasts longer than an hour, you know, check out the schools, check out the libraries and the loop carousel downtown. Unprecedented, that's for sure. Mayor Woodward, what's uh, one thing you want everyone to know today about in regards to the heat response? Well, it sounds like as I, as I listened to your weather forecaster that tonight, today is a 107. We broke a record yesterday and temperatures will gradually decrease. But, um, you know, if you can just hang tight, all of our splash pads are open, the pools are open. I know I see lots of people enjoying the river. I did myself over the weekend. Uh, we have lots of parks. We have 105 different parks that people can enjoy um, with lots of trees and shade. But, you know, do whatever you can. Not everybody has air conditioning in our city. And so I ask people to watch over their family members, check in with their elderly neighbors, those who are vulnerable, and maybe have, if they don't have air conditioning, you do invite them over for a while or even 
You know, if you know them well enough to spend the night, have some friends over. I know a lot of people have been doing that, sharing their air-conditioned homes with loved ones and friends. Yeah, I love that idea. Invite and love on your neighbors and, you know, invite them over if you have mm -hmm. AC. All right, Mayor Woodward, yeah. thanks so much for being with us. I appreciate your time. All right, and in talking Thanks about the extreme heat, we do want to get to meteorologist Jeremy Lagoon now tracking another very hot day after a record breaking day. It's Jeremy, yesterday was an all time record for our area. Yeah, you know, uh, a lot of people asking, was it an all time for the day or all time for every day? It's every day. It, yesterday was the warmest temperature we have ever seen in Spokane, Washington on any day. That was the case for many different cities around the state. I'll walk you through a few of those in just a bit, but for now, just know that temperatures are on the rise. We are already in the 80s in Spokane and Coeur d'Alene, Moses Lake and Wenatchee, 77 in Sandpoint, but those temps are on the rise. It is going to be another hot day. We have an excessive heat warning still in place that lasts through the weekend for our temperatures approaching those dangerous levels. But as you heard Mayor Woodward say, a great way to beat the heat is to find some shade. If you're stuck in sun, it's hot. If you can just find a little shade, it offers a little reprieve. If you can find someone or some place with air conditioning, I suggest a movie theater. It's always a great time to go out and catch a movie now that everything's reopening. It's a great way to escape the heat, find something dark for a few hours. It's a way to get away because you're really going to want to find a way to get away over the course of the next few. Today, we're up to 107 degrees. If it weren't for yesterday, this would be the warmest June temperature on record. But yesterday, we did get up to 109 in Spokane. Today, we're close to that yesterday high in every place across the inland northwest. Still in the triple digits, still talking potential for record breaking heat. And we've got that going on for the next few days. Tim. Jeremy, thank you. Well, it's the day many people across Washington have been waiting for. Today, this state is fully reopened. This morning, Dana Marie McNichol joining us live to explain the changes businesses will see today. Good morning, Dana Marie. Good morning, Tim. It's a very exciting day for all those living in Washington. For more than a year, we've been um, experiencing these restrictions. So now Washington State is fully reopened. And now what does that mean for us? I'm going to break it down. So businesses and restaurants will be able to operate at full capacity and their operations as well. Now, the only limitation that will still apply after today applies to large indoor events. If an indoor event has more than 10,000 simultaneous participants, they will be restricted to 75% capacity unless all attendees are vaccinated. The restrictions will be reevaluated on July 31st, according to the governor's office. So what happens to mask mandates now that the state reopens? Well, the current mask rules are not going away. The Washington Department of Health says people who are unvaccinated must still wear masks in public indoor places. You do not need to wear a mask outdoors if you're participating in an outdoor sport or maybe even playing in the water, whether you're vaccinated or not. The state rules say even vaccinated people still need to wear a mask in certain indoor places like child care camps, schools, health care settings, prisons, jails, homeless shelters and transportation hubs. Those will also require masks. I'm pretty much used to it now because it's like a thing I carry out the house. I carry my wallet. <laughs> well, you may still need to wear a mask depending on the workplace, business or city. Now, the state health department puts it this way. Respect the rules of the room that you're in and to help celebrate this reopening. Governor Jay Inslee is traveling to Spokane this afternoon. He's going to be hosting um, a celebration alongside Mayor Nadine Woodward at River Park Square. So we're going to be covering that in just a little bit, giving you the details of that celebration. Reporting live in Spokane, I'm Dana Marie McNichol. Dana Marie, thank you. Taking a live look now at Avista's power outage map. There are no outages being reported right now, despite Avista saying power outages would be over by eight. Around two, 200 people still didn't have power until late into the evening. Avista is calling these targeted power outages. To be clear, it's different from the rolling blackouts we've seen in California and Texas. Those states use the rolling blackouts to prevent any catastrophic electrical grid failure. Texas and California didn't have enough power to meet the demand. And while demand is extremely high for our area, supply issues are not the case here. We have plenty of supply, but it's the transformers that can't take the heat.
the substations are like the heart and so we really have to protect them because if they are damaged um, then that can cause significant issues for the neighborhoods that they serve. Places that have been or will be impacted include parts of the South Hill neighborhoods in northeast Spokane, such as Logan and Hilliard, and some places in northwest Spokane. Parts of Spokane Valley near Barker Road may also experience outages. Now, there are a lot of elements when it comes to this heat wave. That's why we're making it easy for you this morning. All you have to do is text the word heat to 509-448-2000, and we'll send you links to our most up-to-date heat-related stories. No surprise here, lake rentals are up in Coeur d'Alene. Even during the past weekend, people braved the Ironman crowds to get out on the water. This morning, Nicole Hernandez is on Lake Coeur d'Alene this morning. Yeah, that's right. It's only like 730 in the morning and it's already getting warm out here with this sun up. So coming up, I'll explain how to stay safe while out on the water.